What's up, everybody? We're just going to be tying a, uh, a Kelly Gallup pattern. It's the uh, the Barely Legal. And uh, we are uh, going to have a little bit of fun, get some marabou everywhere. And uh, we're going to be using some uh, TMC hooks. And the way that I do it is I usually uh, start with a smaller hook in the rear and I two-step it up. So we're going to be starting with a six. And then our front hook will be a uh, size two. So I'm skipping the size four anyway. So that's just how I do it. Um, other people may do it differently. This is probably on the larger end for what I do. But uh, well, let's go ahead and get started. I've got some thicker uh, thread. This is a uh, eight aught wax thread by Simperfly. And so let's go ahead and just start that right here in the middle of the shank of our hook. And I'll work my way back with some nice touching wraps, covering up that hook shank, putting down a thread base. And this pattern here can get really sloppy really fast. We're gonna be using just some uh, strung marabou in white. I'm just gonna take that out of the package and kind of keep it over here. And we're going to be progressively making this bigger, starting with thinner pieces here towards the back and then working our way up to uh, thicker pieces as we progress into this fly to build a taper. Um, of course, uh, we're gonna start with uniformity and so I'm gonna measure roughly the length of the uh, shank of the hook and that will be the size of our tail. And I'll just go ahead and tie that in and then work my way up just a little bit, almost to where that halfway point is. That way we're gonna start building a little bit of a taper. I'll trim that out, kind of set it to the side and then work our way back to where we tied that original point in. And then I will now match that in some UV olive. So let's just grab a, a feather here. You can see I'm going to, one, keep the olive just a little bit heavier than the white on this. That's just a personal preference, but we're going to go ahead and line those up so the tips are about even. And go ahead and do a nice two, three wraps, making sure that it doesn't walk around the shank of the hook. And if you are, are more diligent than me, you prep your marabou a little bit better so that it doesn't walk on you. But I'm gonna cheat and use a little bit of uh, Z cement here in a second. So we are well into this fly now. So I'll just go ahead and clean that up, making sure that uh, we've got our olive on top and our white on bottom. Looks pretty good, tips are even. So let's tie in our body. This is just some uh, medium chenille. You can go with a, a polar chenille, a thicker chenille. Um, you could do ice dove for the body. You could do uh, dubbing loops. There's a whole bunch of different things you can do. What's up, Kobe? Um, but the key is you wanna just make sure you get this material nice and secure, really kind of crank that in. And I think it was Kelly himself, uh, he divides his up into thirds. So what's up, Coastal Fusion? How are you? Welcome to the party. We're just tying up uh, Barely Legal. We're going to be making a nice uh, hot mess here. And um, before I start palmering that, I'm going to – what's up, Oscar? Oh, I forgot to uh, put that, uh, that wax on here to uh, keep this from, I had some pliers, oh there they are, sorry, couldn't find my pliers, what's up Oscar, how are you, so I always keep a pair of these little pliers here, because sometimes these lids just, just want to just glue on, I haven't used them in a hot minute, so that way we're not damaging the, uh, the bottle too much and so I'm just going to lay down a little bit of Z cement just to keep that uh, durable it's me Robin Phillips Fies we talked on Instagram thanks buddy welcome to the party yeah I'm off uh, Instagram and Facebook for the next uh, couple weeks but you know I've got to do a, a YouTube video 
on this pattern. So I figure why not practice via live. So I'm just taking the chenille, wrapping around. I'm doing great, man. I'm about to, ready to go to bed, but um, I got two or three kids that have the flu. I know one for sure, and the other two are not doing much better, so I'm kind of making sure I stay awake for another hour so I can get them some more medicine, and then that way I can go to sleep peacefully knowing they're, you know, going to make it through the night. So that's how I'm doing. I'm just trying to stay awake tying some flies. Now, I'm using strung marabou, which I'm not necessarily, it's not my favorite because you never know the consistency you're going to get. And it just seems to be so fluffy all the time, which is great. But to get them roughly the same size sometimes can be a little difficult. Um, this is the uh, Raid Zap Bobbin. It's uh, a new one. It's uh, pretty cool. You can undo the tip, adjust the tube length, as you can see. So right now I just kind of have it, make sure you crank it down. I know they're generation two. Um, they've added little grips on here to help assist with what I was just describing. But um, we're just gonna be stacking this. And the key is when you're stacking this, is you want to do about, I'm going to be tying them in right here, so I want to go about half the distance in here. 7 a.m. in Sweden. Man, go get go to a bakery right now and eat some really nice uh, krengle for me because uh, I can't get that over here. Now, don't cut out your marabou. That's key on this step because we're building bulk. We're building bulk. We're taking names, building bulk. Now I'm gonna actually cut out the core of this and get rid of that. Cause you wanna basically create almost uniformity with this, uh, this olive to white. So yeah, that looks pretty good. Um, I know that with this particular pattern, you could probably switch it up. A lot of you guys are in Scandinavia right now. You could probably switch it up to maybe mimic some sea bait fish. But uh, right here I'm mimicking a uh, baby rainbow minnow. And so that's what I'm going to be targeting with this. So go ahead and clean that up. And it doesn't have to be perfect. But then as I, I get back to here, I just kind of preen it back right here using the trifecta. And then I'll just get right up in there, making sure that my olive stays on top and my white stays on bottom. And that is nice and sexy. What's up, Oscar? Man, you can, we got a lot of Scandinavians on right now. This is awesome. I'm glad that uh, I'm uh, on kid duty tonight. I mean, not that I'm not always on kid duty, but my wife is usually up working, but she also has the flu. And so I'm trying to let her sleep for a little bit. Um, from Ikebu Skona. Um, you know, I got, it sounds like we got some Swedes on here. It's not dogs or sickening for die Oscar. You know, I speak Danish. I'm trying to read the, uh, I'm assuming that's Swedish, but uh, yeah, I don't know if you guys know this about me, but uh, I uh, lived in Denmark for a few years, so. Jeg kan godt tale dansk, og jeg kan godt forstå svenske og norske, but jeg var født til Amerika, so. Now you really want to, since we laid down that, uh, that glue, just really crank down these wraps. This is Swedish, yeah, I figured. So who's the better fly tires in the world? The Swedes, the Danes, or the Norwegians? Since we only have Swedes on here, I guess we'll say the, uh, the Swedes. 
Um, I don't know. Coastal Fusion, if you're still on here, where I can't remember where you live. I can't remember if you're in Norway or Sweden. But, um, you know, I'm really, I could really, I don't know what the, the, uh, the Swedish traditional meal for, for Christmas is, but I could really go for some fleskestai and some uh, red cabbage and some, uh, some of that right about now. That is some delicious food. Oh yeah, that's nice and sexy. Okay, we are well into this. We're almost halfway done, guys. Uh, oh man, it's gonna be nice being out of school for two weeks. So Kobe, where are you at, man? Where are you at in the world? Okay, so for those just uh, joining in that can't read the title, this is the uh, Barely Legal. It's a Kelly Gallup pattern. And man, that is a thick piece. I'm gonna save this one for the front. So on these back halves, we wanna go with some thinner, sparser marabou. Um, so when it gets wet, it's going to have bulk up here on the front into a taper. And this is focusing. I apologize that it's focusing all weird. I thought I set that. Okay, so you're not too bad. You're just a, what a, you're not, you were, I think we're the same time zone. And there's another just really thick piece. Dang it. I was hoping for a thin one here. Um, this is a really nice patch of strung marabou. Okay, we'll just, we'll just waste it. So I'll just preen off some of this bottom part. Trying to, I'm, I'm basically just feeling the same thickness here that I've been doing. Yeah, yeah, we're same time zone. And then the key is when I do that wrap, I just kind of keep it there on top. And you can leave that tip in. It's not gonna hurt anybody. But I really like this uh, Hey, Sven, greetings from California. What's the purpose of the chenille? The purpose of the chenille is just to create um, the body. Um, I've done these where I've done um, uh, dub bodies, ice dub, um, all the way through. Um, I can't remember when I was watching. Uh, it's been a while since I've seen the Kelly Gallup do this video. I think he might explain it. Um, but I, I definitely know it's to add some flash, add some attractor. Um, it's to create the body for sure. And, you know, all of the above. If you've ever looked at a minnow, it seems to have some speckle flash. And this is just not focused. I apologize. I can't exit now, though. All right. So there is the back half. So you can see how this, this one folds in half. I went probably a little long on this one. Um, no, I am in Utah. But you can see how that's, I think, uh, stacked. So boom. That's how we like it. I'm just going to make sure I've got a really nice clean eye here. Um, before I, I lay down a little bit of resin. I'm just using my fingernail to make sure everything's out of the way because I did not reverse tie that chenille like I usually do. So apologize if that noise came through on your end. But yeah, we're golden right there. So I'm just going to leave that in for a second. I'm going to grab some of this... Uh, yeah, they do have some good alpine likes. And I'm just going to put a little drop of this uh, uh, Raid Zap um, thin UV resin right here on the side. And then I'll put it on this side just to kind of hold everything in place. You know, it might be a little overkill. You don't need it. You could do a double whip finish. It's just letting that soak in for a minute. Go ahead and cure that up.
Yeah, Utah's got some good uh, high alpine lakes for sure. Okay, now I forgot to get out a product. Let me see. It's in this bin. Oh man, I was sitting on a hook. Don't want to do that. All right, so I have here. Oh, cool, I found some ice chips. There we go. All right, I wish that would focus. I thought I said it. I apologize on that. You get the point. So I just have some uh, spider wire, uh, 50 pound test. I've kind of switched over all of my articulations to this. What's the traditional meal at Christmas in the US? I would say there is no traditional meal other than maybe ham, like a ham. That's what we've always had. Um, so take this, we're gonna set it aside and we're gonna step up two hook sizes. So now we're on to a size two. Um, but I think growing up, I've always had um, ham with uh, potatoes, mashed potatoes, and my mom does um, uh, hollandaise sauce with the uh, um, potatoes. But then we also have a few Danish, like we'll do actually rice pudding in my house. Um, post meal, of course, we'll do some red cabbage. Uh, she'll do some uh, uh, sugar. Uh, potato, uh, brown brown sugar potato, uh, potatoes, the, you know, the little micro ones that you guys, I think, enjoy. And now I'm going to go into the bin just a little bit, and then I'll work my way up, leaving just a tag in. We're doing this a little different than the uh, um, than Kelly Gallup does. I'm going to be putting a bait fish head on here um, that's just nice and metal. So we're switching it up a little bit. Uh, what do you think about Ikea? I like Ikea. What do you think about it? I'll tell you what I love to do. I love trying to put together Ikea furniture without the instructions. Is that weird? It's just something I enjoy doing. Okay, now you could run some uh, beads on here if you want. Um, that just helps to prevent uh, fouling. Sometimes it adds a little bit of a rattle. I'm not going to do that on this one. I'm just going to leave it a little bit loose so that it's flowy, flowy, shimmy, shimmy, bang, bang, maybe about right there. And then we'll go ahead and tie this in. Now I'm leaving this long because I'm crazy. What I'm going to do is... I'm going to run this back down through a second time. So I'm going to pull it all the way tight and then bring it over on the other side. And I cut it way too long so that they're both about the same length. And that way it's doubled up and we can cut that out. And then now we can really crank on these wraps. And I'm going to tie it in down the bend, leaving a little bit about an eighth of an inch. I don't know what that would be in millimeters, but. And then, of course, I'll fold back over those two tag ends over themselves. And what we also just did is we started our taper. And if you can't crank with your thread, switch to a GSP. Um, and then I'll come up just a little bit to about the hook point. And we're just gonna repeat the whole process again. So pretty, pretty simple. Um, oh, five weight. Um, you're talking to the wrong guy. I actually don't, I don't think, uh, no, I have, I have one five weight. I have a Mondo five weight. Um, I really like it. But I typically fish a uh, on rivers a four weight, and then for uh, still water, I'm on a six or an eight. Now, I'm, normally I, I, I talked to you earlier. I said we're going to be building up bulk, so we're going to be using some thicker marabou. Um, 
But um, what I'm going to do here is because the marabou isn't split, I'm going to tie in a piece on my side that's the same thickness as we've been tying in on the rear. So that way it's going around the hook um, point. And then I'll tie another piece in of exact equal almost. And this marabou is just getting everywhere now. My wife, luckily she's asleep. You can see I just cut out the tip there to make it um, about the same. Yeah, I don't know why. I love um, a lot of people over here, and I don't mean this in general, but I have a lot of friends. They've actually hired people to put together IKEA furniture. And to me, it's like building Legos. Wicked fun, man. Um, but, yeah, we've, we've had a lot of IKEA furniture. We've got one maybe an hour north of me so boom we are well into the front section but you can see there how that white is just going to be stacked layered in mm. so let's grab a piece of uh this oh man look at this this is just prime i don't think i've ever had this much luck out of strung marabou but this one i don't like the very very tip so i'm going to cut it out see how it's kind of bending all weird and you can be super super hey see oscar you can be super super picky with your your marabou and spend tons of time and have it be like perfectly lined up but from my experience taper and sloppiness is awesome you can even prep all your feathers so they're the same. But in the end, I think they both catch the same. If not, a messier one catches more fish. But you can see how I'm saving that marabou on there. Let's cut that out. Go ahead and work our way back up into this. And then making sure our olive in white is stacked. I think that is pretty critical to do that. But let's get our chenille ready to tie in. And I'm just pulling off the, the flashiness to expose the core so I can really crank that in and make sure it's nice and secure because this takes a beating at the end of the day. Okay, let's lay down a little bit of Z cement. Just to keep all that uh, hunky dory, pumpkin squeezy, awesome possum. And I'm laying it down just a little bit thick there. And then we will come around here, making sure that we separate our marabou and just really kind of crank down on that so you're borderline thinking that you're gonna have it pop out of the vise. The red truck diesel, nine fun. <laughs> oh man, that's awesome. The red truck diesel. I feel like I just bent that hook. It's really moving on me. Yep, it moved. That's because this is a size two and this Regal is made for a size two with the stainless jaws. That's about as big as you're supposed to go. And so I might be doing too much with this big hook on here. Um, so now we're just going to grab, I've done it where I take the time and, you know, avoid this hook point, but we don't need to do that for a life feed, you know, where you tie in two of the same again. But I think at this point we're okay to just tie in a nice clump. Just make sure it stays on the bottom, nice and stacked. And then I'll just bring that up just a little bit. I'm not gonna bring it up all the way cause I don't wanna crowd the eye cause we're gonna be putting on a head. And then we'll back our thread back up to our tying point. Grab one of these nice um, 
No, I have not been out on the water lately, but I, uh, I'm going to go over uh, New Year's. We're going to be uh, up visiting some family, and uh, I've got some ice fishing planned, which I'm excited for. I ice fish. I love ice fishing. It's a lot of fun. So I'm getting kind of stoked about that. But the last time I was out on the water was Thanksgiving. All right, we are almost done. We just got one more stack to do. Just want to make sure all that's nice and tied down, really tight wraps. Oh man, this is just bushy beast. Look at that. That's going to taper so nice. Hmm. So this pattern just catches fish. I remember the first time I saw it, I was like, really? But it just catches fish. Oh, dude, yeah, ice fishing is a blast. Um, I definitely recommend a flasher or some sort of um, electronics like a, a fish finder. It makes it a lot more enjoyable. But that's just me. Um, I remember ice fishing was the most boring thing in the world until I got me a, a flasher. And then now it's just like game on. So you can see I'm really cranking on this uh, chenille. You can pull on it. That's why I tie it in by the, the cords. But we're really trying to overlap these so that we build a little bit of bulk here at the head. Helps with the taper profile. Helps keep that marabou kind of stuck up. Not in the sense of like a, you know, a high school senior, but in the sense of profile. Okay, and then we'll end this right there, leaving us plenty of room for that bait fish head and the marabou. Perfect. So whenever you're doing a head, always make sure it's going to fit. See, I got a lot of room there to tie in a nice thick piece of marabou. So we are golden. But that's, you know, I'm pretty good at tying flies sometimes. I've, no, I'm kidding. I'm mediocre. Sometimes I, I get lucky and the stars aligned and I get a decent fly. But the true test is if it catches the fish. Now you can see here, I'm going to make this one just a little bit longer because it's a little bit heavier and we are going to tie that in with a few wraps we'll go ahead and trim that out making sure not to cut our thread at this point clean up that fluff making sure it's right there on the bottom I'm going to be OCD here. Oh yeah, we're golden. Okay, now we got a really nice piece. This is really nice and thick. Cut out that tip. And we're gonna lay that right there. Look at that flow. Mm. And then I'm gonna pinch that. Do one, two, three, four. I'm actually gonna fold it back over itself just because we got a pretty big head we gotta fill here. And that way I'm not gonna burn through like, you know, a ton of resin. Um, normally I use um, a product uh, that's called uh, E2000 or E9000 or something. It's a uh, waterproof flexible glue. But because we're live, um, that takes overnight to cure. So, yeah, we're golden. So I'm just doing a bunch of thread wraps, just cleaning that up. That way, if this head ever breaks, we've got a really solid, solid head. Go ahead and do a whip finish, keeping that marabou out of the whip finish. Super flowy. Okay, now 
we're gonna take this uh, thick resin. I'm gonna put a nice glob all the way around this. It's almost like we're building a resin head, but we're not because we're gonna put a bait fish metal head, which also helps with weight. And so I'm just gonna take that, make sure it's uh, centered. And I will cure that in position. Like I said, I'm using a uh, like a, a water place like that E E E nine thousand I think is what I usually use, or you could use uh, liquid fusion. But then I want to come in here, make sure your tip's clean, and just inject a bunch of this resin just to hold it, so it's not going to move. Cure it up. about 15 seconds you can see that's 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 on there pretty good um, the only reason I like that other stuff is just because I, I I know it's a lot more flexible whereas sometimes the resin bonding with these metal heads causes issues and so I definitely would recommend um, that glue over this yeah, this is um, a super effective fly streamer, and you can do it with just a cone head, but I really, really, really like um, using um, some, some of these heads, the way that it causes it to move. And now that we got that, let's see if we inject a little bit of this NOTAC. Um, a little heavier uh, resin that might bond a little better just to keep all of this because I'm not going to go back and re-glue this. We're going to fish this as is, hopefully, over the break. And so I'm just trying to inject that all over, trying to bond it to the marabou. Maybe it got a little sloppy there, but we're okay with that. Uh, what size fly would Rob? Um, I'm the wrong guy to ask that question because I'll throw I've thrown big streamers with a four weight, um, but I would definitely throw this with a like I said my streamers usually when I'm throwing streamers it's a six or an eight weight. We also have these nice little eyes here, and we're just going to. Um, Put these in with a little bit of super glue because the super glue and the metal bond a little bit better. So I'm just going to put a little drop in there and then I'll come in with my eye, drop it in, use the back of my um, bobbin or uh, whip finish tool, just kind of position it. And I put enough glue in there that it's going to wiggle for a minute before it sets. I wonder if I can super glue this. Um, sinking line or floating line? Uh, it just depends on where you're targeting. Something like this, I might throw shallow. So I'd throw it on floating line and let this just sink for a minute before um, retrieving it. But you could definitely fish it on sinking line, you know, out in the middle of a lake, uh, depending on what level or where the fish are. Um, Channeling, you can see how those eyes really just add to the, uh, oh man, there's going to be marabou stuck in that vise. So that's just going to taper down, you know, boom. You could even come in and do some barring or um, add some, some dots. And that eye stuck to my finger. So I'll have to fix those. Um, but there you go. You can see that chenille shining through the core. 
And um, next time, let your super glue dry before you touch the eyes. But uh, pretty simple, two hooks. Um, definitely go bigger to small, um, bigger hook in the front, smaller in the rear. You can use just a cone head. Um, it's a uh, uh, Kelly Gallup, I think it's his fly. And it is called the, uh, the barely legal. And maybe because it's barely legal to fish places because it's so effective. And um, all you need is olive and white marabou. You could also, I tie these up with some uh, um, darker gray uh, marabou, switching up the, the, the chenille in the middle too. But as it gets wet, you know, I don't want to stab myself, but you can see how that's just going to get a really nice profile and it's going to have some nice shimmy shimmy bang bang to it so that is the uh, the live feed tonight um i've got about 15 minutes i'm gonna clean up and then uh, go get my kids uh make sure they're all still breathing because they're asthmatic and uh hopefully they are and then we'll uh i'll be going to bed so thanks for uh tuning in i'll save this if anybody wants to watch it but uh, yeah, you guys have a great Christmas. Thanks for watching.